السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته الله الذي لا اله الا هو الواحد الحميد فضل الصمد الحمد لله حمدا يليق بذاته واسمائه وصفاته في كماله وجلاله الصلاه والسلام على اشرف خلقه وانبيائه محمد الصادق الأمين الرسول المؤمن وعلى آله الطاهرين الطيبين وأصحابه الغر الميانين تابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم تقبل منا صيامنا وصلاتنا وقيامنا اللهم جل ذلك كله لوجهك خالصا اللهم لا تكلنا إلى أعمالنا اللهم لا تكلنا إلى جهدنا اللهم لا تكلنا إلى شيء من أنفسنا بل ولا تكلنا إلى شيء من خلقك طرفة عين يا أرحم الراحمين يا رب العالمين A thought from and a reminder from Surat Luqman which we completed Luqman as perhaps all of you know is a very special human being in the history of man whom Allah elected and chose and granted him wisdom so that he is known to be Luqman al-Hakim Luqman the wise the wisdom that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspires some of his elected and selected ibad. When you put in hikmat of aqad uthi khair and kathira, Allah Azzawajal selects those to whom he grants wisdom that, wisdom that we are talking about that is meant in the Quran and in the uh, religious scriptures that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed. And this Luqman alayhi salam is having a majlis with his son. That's something for all of us to behold. A father and a son, a father and a child. And we can imagine that this must have taken place frequently. with wisdom. And in that circle he sits with his son and he's not the father, and therefore mothers learn from that as well. He's not the son who is there to provide only biologically for his son. He's not only a biological father, but to make sure that his son is biologically upright. Feeding and drinking and giving water and giving shelter and giving clothing and no animals do that as well every animal does that to another baby animal mothers animals do that fathers animals do that this is not what we are about as human beings and, and in particular as people who believe in the divine people who uphold virtues People who expect to be resurrected on the day of judgment. People who expect to be judged. People who, ex who expect to enter paradise or hell. Do not live that way. And in their majalis with their children, this is a glimpse of it. He sits with his child and what does he teach him? What does he talk to him about? Most importantly and first and foremost, Tawheed Allah Azza wa Jalla. Tawheed Allah Azza wa Jalla. This ought to be, my dear sisters and brothers, yours and my recipe that we share with our children frequently in circles at home, outside. We should take often and frequently this opportunity to sit and hold a serious conversation with our children. And we should do that very early on 
الحمد لله to do our best to get them used to that even if they are not mature enough and they are young to sit and do that but let's get them used to that if we ourselves are used to that that's the point the one who does not have something cannot give of it so he sits with his son and said ya bunayya la tushrik billah inna ash-shirka la dhulmun adhim oh my dear son do not associate partners with allah for associating associating partners with allah is a momentous act of transgression is dhulm adhim it's worse than killing the life alive it's worse than killing all lives and that's a most horrendous crime, a shirk is worse than that. Is a shirk is in a sense killing everything in the universe, including particles and atoms, and everything because the mushrik claims that all of these things are here without purpose, and that this orderliness in which they are and they exist has come by coincidence and it has no maker this is a most horrible cry do not associate anything oh my son with Allah subject and we teach ourselves and our children all forms of shirk all types of shirk that we must avoid and then we keep learning ourselves and practicing and teaching our children and others to teach them how to practice Tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal in our lives despite the odds and despite the difficulties and the limits and the hardships and the obstacles in ourselves, in our children and around us we must not stop doing that that's what we are created for That's what we are created for. My work, your work, my job, your job, my function, your function is not what we are created for. That is a means to what we are created for. That I should remember that what I do, my function, my job, my work, my occupation, no matter what, is a means to what I am created for. I must use it and it must be only a means to what I have been created for. La tushrik billah. Inna shirka la vulmun azim. Wa vulmu vulumatun yawm al-qiyamah. And certainly those of us who transgress shall find on the day of judgment only darkness upon darkness. With ayyad billah. And vulm is in this dunya darkness. Oppression, injustice in this dunya is darkness. Shirk is the worst of all vulm when they have been there. And he continues with this profound, deep discourse though, in simple words, with his young son. And he tells him, and after that, after the Abudiyah, he tells him why the Abudiyah? The Abudiyah is because of the Rububiyah of Allah Azza wa Jal. His Lordship, Ya Bunayya, inna in taku mithqala habbatin min khardalin, fatakun fi s-samawati, aw fi l-ardi, ya'ati biha Allah, inna Allah latifun khabir. Why? Oh my son, if there is a seed, a mustard seed, insignificant, particle and wherever it is in space-time or in earth in meaning on or inside earth Allah Azzawajal will call it to come will bring it his is in control over it are you with me not a hand not a particle not a particle there are something like 10 to the power 76 <coughs> electrons in the universe, they say. They say. Imagine every one of those is under control by the message. Allah Akbar. Allah. Allah is subtle. Allah 
has subhanahu wa ta'ala knowledge in the deepest way, in the most subtle way, in everything about everything, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I must worship him. So I must invoke him. So I must solicit him. So I must trust him. So I must love him. So I must rely on him. So I must not associate anything with him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he continues to address his young son in this conversation. And I pray that we learn ourselves to practice and we learn to have such conversation with our families and children as necessary, if not frequently. Ya Bunaya, aqim salata Allahu Akbar. Oh my son, perform salah. Let's keep reminding our children, ourselves, if we practice and are an example for them. Aqim salah Allahu Akbar. First, aqim salah You can't do anything without tawheed, no shirk, and ibadah, dhikr of Allah Azza wa of which the most important dhikr is salah, then after that, da'wah. Ya Bunayya, aqim salata da'wah, wa amur bil ma'rufi wa ma'adil munkar. And enjoying that which is ma'ruf, that which is right, that which is beautiful, that which is virtuous, and forbid that which is evil. Teach that, share that. Talk about that while you are doing your best to practice that yourself through tawheed, through salah, and so on. And with that teaching a son, my son, this is life. Like what Sheikh Jafar earlier was telling to the youth, youth, come up and be in salah. You were in playing basketball for an hour and a half and you don't feel tired and you come to Salah for 10 minutes standing and then you find excuses to leave. Asbar ala ma asabak. Let's teach them sabr. You know, we teach sabr in, sabr is in everything. If there is no sabr, there is no real life. If I can't practice sabr patience, patience means I have to have a restraint inside of me against that which myself desires, which is not at the moment a priority at least, if not haram and prohibited and harmful. I must practice sabr. I must practice patience. So we teach ourselves, we teach our children to practice patience in the face of what they like and we don't like for them, if Allah doesn't like that. For ultimately, it is bad for them and for us. And we were younger before them, and we have gone through that. And we don't want them to fall into the same traps that we fell into. So we teach them to be patient. I.e., in being a muwahid, in performing salah, in amr bin ma'roof, in nai'ali munkar, in wanting to be what is right, asbar. If you want to be really someone with resolve, someone that is an A plus, in the this is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. And he continues to teach him beautiful things such as look, when you speak, don't don't be too loud. We still, some of us have not yet learned. We are 70 and we are 50 and we are, and we have not learned that we should not raise our voices when we talk. We should not raise our voices when we laugh, especially when you are at a, in a masjid. When you enter a masjid, please don't behave like if you were, I don't know where. All of us have something to change. I or you might have the problem of speaking too loud. Don't speak too loud. It's not nice. And if that's what you are naturally, well, work on it to change it. This is what Luqman teaches. In other words, Allah is telling us that raising our voices is a behavior of donkeys. 
it's not befitting of virtuous human beings. Don't raise your voice when you speak, when you laugh, especially, I say, in the house of Allah. Even when you walk, he's teaching his son, my son, when you walk, walk with humility, walk with humbleness. Don't walk like you own the earth. Don't walk like you are a legion by yourself of tanks rolling on earth. Walk so finish. And this he continues to teach his son and to remind his son, and I am sure, and as you are, that the man was practicing that before he was teaching that. And for us, we are not look man. For us, we should what, do what? Strive to practice that and teach that to our children. And pray, and pray, and pray, and pray, for no one can make it alone by himself to Allah Azza wa Jal without the help of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allahumma ja'alna min al-ladina istami'una al-awla fa ittabi'una al-hasana wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi alayhi al-azim.